I'm Shiji Thomas, working for an airline. Uh, can you explain the concept of original sin? The sister asked the question, can you explain the concept of original sin? Sister of Islam is concerned, there is no concept of original sin. In Islam, we believe every child is born sinless. And the Quran clearly states that no bearer of burden can bear the burdens of others. No bearer of burden can bear the burdens of others. Quran says in several places. Regarding the concept of original sin, taught by the church, I can tell you that. Taught by the church. And what the Bible says also, I'll tell you. I am a student of compared religion which compares both the teachings. And what the church teaches, that if, may Allah be pleased with her, that she tempted Adam for eating the apple. And we find the story in the book of Genesis, chapter number 3. That she tempted Adam to eat the forbidden fruit. And because of that, humankind is born in sin. In Quran, the story of Adam and Eve, peace be upon them, is mentioned. But there is not a single verse in the Quran which puts the blame only on Eve. In fact, if you read Surah Araf, chapter 7, verse number 19 to 27, it says that Adam and Eve, peace be upon them, they are addressed a dozen of times. It says both of them disobeyed Almighty God. Both of them repented. And both of them were forgiven. Both, the blame is put equally on both. There is not a single verse in the Quran which singles out Eve, peace be upon her. But there is one verse in the Quran which speaks only about Adam al salam. In Surah Taha, chapter 20, verse number 121, it says that Adam, peace be upon him, disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you read the complete Quran, the blame is put equally on both Adam and Eve. But in the Bible, the blame is only put on Eve, may Allah be pleased with her, saying that she tempted Adam to eat the forbidden fruit. If you go to Genesis chapter 3, verse number 16, it says that Almighty God says that you woman, you shall multiply in conception and bear labor pains. Means pregnancy is a punishment in the Bible because Eve disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, if you compare sister, Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse number 1, respect the womb that bore you. In Surah Luqman chapter 31, verse number 14, and Surah Hakaf chapter 46, verse number 15, it says that they have enjoined on the human beings to be kind to their parents. In travail upon travail did your mother bore you, and in pain did she give you birth. Pregnancy uplifts the woman, does not degrade her like the Bible. Coming to your original sin. So what they say, that since Eve tempted Adam to eat the forbidden fruit, therefore humankind is born in sin. Every child is born in sin. I am asking the question, did Eve ask me before eating the apple? If I told her, okay, eat, then I am then I'm very well responsible. Did Adam ask me, peace be upon them both, that can I eat the forbidden fruit? When they didn't ask me, how can I be held responsible? It's illogical. How can I be held responsible? If they ask me and if I have given them permission, then you can hold me responsible. So surely you cannot hold me responsible. But the Christian church teaches that because she disobeyed God and Adam and Eve disobeyed God, mainly due to Eve, whole humankind is born in sin. And because of that, what they say, that God Almighty, He gave His begotten Son as a sacrifice. And they quote Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever believeth in Him shall not die, but have everlasting life. Again, this is a commentary I can give, if you want to know, of this verse. This begotten is not then the original manuscript, according to 32 scholars of the highest eminence, Christian scholars. They say the word begotten is not then the original manuscript. So if you analyze what the church teaches, that every human being is born in sin, and they quote, the soul that sinneth shall die. And it's the quotation of the Bible, I do agree with it. It is Ezekiel chapter 18, verse number 20. The soul that sinneth shall die. They end the verse where the verse doesn't end. If you read the Bible, sister, the soul that sinneth shall die is mentioned there in the Bible in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. But it continues and says, The soul that sinneth shall die. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. The wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son, neither the son shall bear the iniquity of the father. The Bible says, The soul that sinneth shall die. The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son, neither the son shall bear the iniquity of the father. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. The wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked turns, and returns to the true part, he shall not die. That is what the complete verse says. So even according to the Bible, sister, sin is not inherited. What the church teaches sin is inherited is against the teaching of the Bible. So if you want to know what Christianity teaches, you have to go according to the Bible. Just because the Muslim says something that women are bad and should ill-treat the women, that doesn't mean Islam ill-treats the women. To know how Islam treats the women, refer to the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. So therefore, sister, even if you read the Bible, there is no concept of original sin. Because the Bible clearly says, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither the father shall bear the iniquity of the son. Iniquity means sins. If the son cannot 
bear the sins of the father, how can we be born in sin, sister? In Islam, every child is born as a masoom, as sinless. Irrespective whether he's born in a Christian family, a Hindu family or a Muslim family, he is born as a Muslim. Our beloved Prophet said every child is born in Deen al-Fitr, in the innate religion. He is born pure. Hope that answers the question, sister.